Welcome to the second Sunday of Easter worship for First Presbyterian Church here in Littlefield, Texas. Um, once again, we have recorded the music so that we can all sing together. Um, a little note on the um, resources that I'll be using today. I'll be reading through reading from a New Living Translation again because I think this is a time that we need to remind ourselves that the church is still living even though we aren't able to be here together. And I will also be reading prayers from the Book of Common Worship because we do worship together even though we are apart. I will call you to worship today with these words from Psalm 16. I will bless the Lord who guides me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. Join me in prayer. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe, the hope of those who doubt. May we who have not seen have faith and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first hymn today will be number 585, the blue hymnal, To God Be the Glory. since Adam and Eve partook of the fruit of the tree, we have all been called to confess our sins. And we take that time to do it now. We will do a silent prayer of confession only so that we may confess our own sins together. Join me in prayer.
Amen. Chapter 2, with verse 14a, the first part of verse 14, to set it up, and then verses 22 through 32. Now here, this happens on the day of Pentecost, and the apostles have gone outside to preach. And they've been accused of being drunk. And Peter has said no. And Peter steps forward and says this. Peter stepped forward with the other 11 apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. People of Israel, listen. God publicly endorsed Jesus the Nazarene 
by doing powerful miracles, wonders, and signs through him as you well know. But God knew what would happen, and his prearranged plan was carried out when Jesus was betrayed. With the help of lawless Gentiles, you nailed him to a cross and killed him. But God released him from the horrors of death and raised him back to life, for death could not keep him in its grip. King David said this about him. I see that the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and my tongue shouts his praises. My body rests in hope, for you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You have shown me the way of life, and you will fill me with the joy of your presence. Dear brothers, think about this. You can be sure that the patriarch David wasn't referring to himself, for he died and was buried, and his tomb is still here among us. But he was a prophet, and he knew God promised an oath that one of David's own descendants would sit on his throne. David was looking into the future and speaking of the Messiah's resurrection. He was saying that God would not leave him among the dead or allow his body to rot in the grave. God raised Jesus from the dead, and we are all witnesses of this. Our gospel reading today is from the gospel according to John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and in his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. One of the twelve disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, We have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands and put my fingers into them place my hand in the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, You believe because you've seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. Our epistle lesson today comes from the first letter written by Peter. All praise to God. This is chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So be truly glad. 
There's wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You love him even though you've never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're kind of where the people Peter's writing to are right now. He wrote this book to several small churches, this, this epistle. It went out to several small churches. And they were in outlying areas. They were not very near to Israel. Some of them were even in what we now call Turkey. And to be a Christian in Roman times was a dangerous thing. To be a Christian in Roman times before the Romans became Christian was to risk your life. Many of the early Christians were martyred, were killed for their faith. One piece of Catholic iconography that we see on occasion is an upside down cross. And Peter was crucified for his beliefs. And when he was crucified, he did not feel that he was sufficient to be killed, to be executed in the same manner that Jesus was. So he asked that he be crucified upside down. And so when you look at a lot of Catholic symbolism, you see an upside down cross and it symbolizes Peter. And Paul spent many years in prison and was eventually executed. The Bible tells the story of the stoning of Stephen, where Paul, then known as Saul, was there holding the cloaks of those who stoned him. And he approved. There have been hard times for Christians for a very long time. And this passage in Peter is one of the things that we can look to, to see what we do with it, what God wants us to do with it. We do what Peter has said. We live with great expectation because we have a priceless inheritance. An inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, meaning us, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. Through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. Grace through faith is one of the fundamental understandings, one of the fundamental tenets of our beliefs. And we understand that faith isn't just us. Faith is also the work of God working with us, working in us. And so when we are stuck in the isolation that we have now, when we are unable to worship together, when we are unable to get out and do the things we want to do, when we can't go see friends and family, when we can't work, when we can't go to school and take care of the children that Honestly, we love to take care of there. When that happens, 
We have to look to God. We have to pray. We have to keep faith. We have to pray for faith. And this trial that we go through, when we keep our faith through this trial, it doesn't so much prove to God that we have faith because God already knows. What it does is it proves to us that we have faith. It proves to us that we can endure. And it proves to us that we are forgiven and loved by our God. Amen. We are a confessing church and I don't think that a confession of faith is something that we should ever skip. And our confession of faith this week will be the familiar words of the Apostles' Creed. You can find it on page 14 in your blue hymnals. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, in this season, we celebrate Jesus' death and resurrection, His ascension into heaven, the grace and salvation that brings to us and the love it shows to us. These are gifts beyond measure and we thank you for them. We thank you for all the people now who are helping those around them, the people who risk illness, injury, even death to take care of others. The people who stand on far shores so that we may be safe here. We thank you for our faith, our friends, our family. We look forward to our time when our fellowship again will be completed. We ask you to watch over those who are ill right now, those hurting with disease, those hurting in their hearts, from loss of loved ones, of work, of a way to sustain their families. Bring to them strength and the peace that can come only from you. Keep us together as a church, even though we are apart, keep all of the churches together. Not just the one that meets within this building. All of your flock, 
Give us strength and faith to endure and to remember and look forward to the joyous time when we reunite with each other and the joyous time when we see you in heaven. We ask these things in the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you are able, and if you are moved to do so, you can still send an offering even though we're not sending the plate around. You can send your offering to P.O. Box 448 here in Littlefield, zip code 79339. We're, the hymn we're going to close with today is where we need to land. And when we finish speaking, when we're first taught how to uh, handle and work with students, one of the things that we're told is land where you want to be. And where we want to be can be found in the words of this hymn. It's number 339 in the blue hymnal. It's number 303 in the red hymnal. Be Thou My Vision.